Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Tennant Nicholson. I'm an international publicist and the chief creative officer of Wasabi Publicity. I also co-founded a media networking um, service called pitchrate.com. And you can actually meet journalists and pitch them your expertise and get yourself placed in news coverage. The purpose of these calls that we're actually featuring on Wasabi Publicity's YouTube channel is um, support calls every month that go along with our pandemic giveaway. We're giving away this book, the 21 Day PR Action Guide, that you can download for free right now during the pandemic. And we're giving three phone calls away each month to actually help you with whatever PR campaign that you're hatching for that month. And I recommend that everybody start a new pitch, a new angle, something new every single month because the news cycle is always changing. So if you haven't gotten your workbook, please go to pitchrate.com, download the workbook. If you've missed some of the past calls, because we've been doing this since, gosh, the pandemic's been since March 2020, we've been doing them monthly. So there's lots of phone calls there that you can actually check into. And we also have um, a way to register for future calls and you can go to the wasabipublicity.com blog. And I always do um, a couple, uh, at least one blog before the Friday calls. And in that blog, there is a registration link that you can use. Um, my staff also puts it inside um, some of the videos too that you can see on the YouTube channel at Wasabi Publicity. And if you're participating in the pitchrate.com community with other journalists, then you're also gonna get an opportunity to register for those calls in the media lead services that you get through those feeds. Now, we are October 9th, 2020. So with October, it's a brand new month. Hopefully you've got a brand new PR campaign. And the first call is about your why. Why are you here? Why are you doing PR? Why do you even want PR? Uh, what do you think that news coverage is actually going to get for you. So one thing that we do is in these calls is we have a short lecture, like I just did, that, that was more like an introduction, but we do like a, sh a little short informational session about what I do every day uh, doing international PR and what, we've, what I've learned the, these past 31 years placing top tier press coverage. And then we're gonna break into sessions and you're gonna be able to speak to somebody else and actually have another creative person in your life to actually bounce your pitches off of, talk about why you're doing PR. And we're gonna jump right into that. And so these are people that you probably don't know. And then we're gonna come back together and actually talk about why you're doing PR. So it could be, why are you on the call? Why are you doing PR? And Hannah, uh, my co-host, is going to break us up into probably just um, two, three people, and we're gonna um, have about four to five minutes to share with each other one-on-one, -on -one, and then we're gonna come back together as a group, okay? Talking about is your big why. Why are you doing PR? Why are you here? What are you gonna be creating for October? In the next 21 days, you wanna be working the workbook, and last month uh, in the first call, somebody was like, well, what's the homework? So then I gave like really like the first 21 days um, that would be that those seven days, those eight days, whatever you know, transpired between the two Fridays. And then the next time they were felt overwhelmed. So I just wanna also say that it's, you know, workbooks are, especially for adults, do what works for you, right? It's laid out for a 21 day process so that you can start to incorporate PR campaigns into your everyday life. But it's like any type of habit, you've got to really like set the stage for being in communication with the press, making it part of the things that you do. Many of us, like was talked about in my blog this week, we do do social media without even thinking about it. We interact with um, people on groups and pages, but how does that actually apply to your bottom line? That like that sometimes you're doing hours and hours of interactions on social media. And I wonder if it's actually moving toward you, toward your goals that you want in life, whether they're business goals, health goals, whatever they are. 
So the big why today is really like, well, what will make a huge difference? So uh, I'm going to share a little bit about Rosalind, uh, but before we talk about the holiday she created, she reminded me about something that we've done for clients for years. But before we talk about creating your own holiday and what she's up to, I want to know just generally who would like to share. This is a place where you can practice your pitch quickly about you know, like who you are, tell us who you are, and then tell us what you're creating and your why. Who would like to share? You don't have to, but if there's somebody that would like to have at it. Do, 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 do. Oh my God. All right, Shell and Clements. Okay, Shell, uh, Clements, why don't you go first? We can't, I can't hear you. Oh, uh, there you are. Sometimes my, my mute, unmute doesn't. Now I can hear you. Now, there, okay. You can. Sometimes yes. it doesn't work. It's, I've been having computer trouble. Um, so I help people write their memoirs and publish books about their family history. And so that's, you know, that's what that is. And then what's happening is that people don't know that's a service that really exists. So I want to be known in Philadelphia as the go-to person. So that's, that's my goal. That's my why. Um, and honestly, like I've just globbed on to your fabulous, fabulous session here. Um, I showed up last week. I'm here this week. It is serving as my motivation, um, but I have yet to do any work on your workbook. So that's where I am. But thank you for, for doing this and listening to what do I do? Perfect, Clemens. Okay, great. And I, it's so funny. Uh, I have a little insight um, because I met a person who is a memoirist that she coaches people through their memoirs. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you what she did here locally that I actually purchased and that might help you in Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, so we're going to come back to that. I'm going to make a point of how to turn your why into money. Okay. And that's another thing. And for <laughs> sure, the workbook is not, you know, it's, it's something that you can really, oh, good. Thanks Rita for the reminder. Put in the chat also your pitch. So you may not want to actually like share uh, verbally and practice your pitches this way, but you can do also do that written way. Shell, what about yours? What's your why? Who are you and what's your why? Uh, for the purposes of this, this program, I am a humor writer and I have a great gift book coming out here before the end of the year called, If You're Over 50, You Know What I Mean. Quinn Bloitz are words just for us that aren't in the dictionary yet. So I'm talking to my why is that we have a whole tribe out there of over 50s who are feeling like nobody really gets it, all the strange stuff's happening to our bodies and our minds and our heads and how we're being perceived by others. And the fact is there's tons of us, there's thousands, there's hundreds of thousands of us and we don't need to be doing this alone. And there's such humor in what we're doing. You have to grow old anyway, so you might as well do it with humor and uh, with your tribe. So that's where I am and I'm trying to get, figure out how to, I am uh, in my other world as a family law attorney, I'm really good at getting out there and giving people advice and helping them and um, giving tips and wisdom. This is about how do I get myself out there in a very succinct way that gets my message across and uh, has impact in a short amount of time so that I can get that product out there and be putting more smiles on more people's faces. Beautiful. And I'm 51, so I'm part of your tribe. And I like some of the, uh, I remember that we had a conversation in the past about that. And I like the way that you've tweaked it. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah, absolutely. Good. And I'll share with, with you guys um, what was very impactful of our little short talk. And, and like you, Clemens, um, stumbled across this. This is, this is three for me. And it is motivating. And I'm real excited about it. But um, I said to Michelle, um, I used the word baby boomers and, and a couple of examples that were from the 80s and she's like blank face. So she's over 50 and really somebody I wanted to talk to and engage with, but I used the wrong terminology and she like totally removed herself from my audience. Yeah, I did. Mistake. I'm a Gen Xer. I do not identify yeah. as a baby boomer. In yeah. fact, vehemently against it because exactly. baby boomers irritate the hell out of no me. Baby boomers. <laughs> And so I yeah, yeah, I, like, I needed to, and, and she absolutely, it was like, oh, oh, you know, because I am talking to you. I mean, there, there's, yeah. some, there's some stuff happening here. So yeah, that was terminology, just one, one little word difference 
I think has a, a, a totally different impact as how I'm being received. So that was really helpful. Yeah. And I was kidding about baby boomers. I just had a bad experience on a board at a co-op recently for two years. And I was surrounded by baby boomers. I was the only Gen Xer. I was the only one who could really use technology. So when I would, <laughs> so when I like, I have like a visceral reaction to baby boomer because they were all like, I went to like some kind of sing along thing and like all the songs were on like, I don't even, these songs, I don't know these songs. What, you don't ride in elevators? Right? I'm like, yeah. I'm like I heard them on music. Exactly. And so then I, like the other thing was I was actually shamed for having all of my notes on my phone. How prepared can you be if you have everything on your phone and you didn't bring any hard copies? I'm like, well, you know, as a co-op, aren't we committed to the environment? And I actually just use technology because I'm the first generation that actually grew up with technology, right? And they just looked at me and they're like, we just don't believe that they literally shamed me. And I was like, you know what? I'm volatile, I'm volunteering my time here, right? I'm not, I'm showing up to serve on a board and I'm being made wrong. This is what I'm talking about as far as a growing pain for the organization, right? So that I would turn it into like, we want to be, we want to be accepting of people who are younger than we are right? We want millennials to show up. We want people with technology to show up, right? And they're like, you know, it was just a debacle. And I'm just like, it's just hilarious how we do the generational thing, but then we do include, exclude. Like the funny thing about my example right there is how, how quickly like I excluded, like any baby boomer on the call was like, oh, she doesn't like me, which is not, that's not what I'm saying. Point is, is like the distinction about generational audience right mm -hmm. so that and you just really soften that title to include me like i felt you everybody wants to be part of the party nobody wants to be excluded as human beings we want to be we want to feel good we want to uh contribute we want to make a difference for each other and then when we're hearing like oh this this is not my tribe mm -hmm. and that's what you just corrected and something yeah. that's very key in our messaging always and sometimes you do want to exclude, mm -hmm. right? Like I, like there, I had some campaigns, they just want to do millennial money. They don't want to talk to baby boomers or Gen Xers, or they just want their millennials or younger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I think um, moving into, if you're over 50, obviously I'm excluding a whole lot of people, but I'm being specific about who I'm talking to. And, and frankly, there's a lot of 70 year olds out there who see over 50 and are, are just as drawn in. So, Hey, the yeah. Goodland, to see more people in the audience. So over 50 covers a wide spectrum without, as you say, breaking down into generations, which was too specific because it's yeah. it's an age issue. It's not a where what we remember from our childhood. Issue. Well, an identity too. Like the other piece, like my mother, she's not she's not a baby. None of these. Like she identifies with the what they call the great generation, mm. right? And so, but it is the language that uh, attracts or repels. Right. And we've talked a lot about that in these calls, like the language of we or the language of me. And so um, the, the, the first part of the workbook is about your messaging. And so as you engage the next week, whether you open up the workbook or not, the point is, is that what message is congruent with your why? Um, okay. So anybody else want to share their why? And then we're going to get into holidays. Okay, so uh, one of the things, so we're sorry, Michelle. Oh, okay. I, I muted you by accident. I was trying to let somebody in. <laughs> yeah, we've got a few changes with Zoom. Yeah, 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 it's fun. Yeah, and let's not make each other wrong. That's like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm thinking, it's so funny because today I'm actually, you know, they're a great co-op and I know this is reversed, but um, I learned a lot being on that board for two years on what works and what doesn't work. And it actually helped me understand what people don't understand about PR, especially local PR. So one of the things that they never would do and they really resisted it, and I hope that you don't is just share your stories, especially your milestones with your local press. Um, to this day, you know, they put a solar, um, a solar roof 
on the on the co-op that's news they wouldn't let me share it with the press and every single meeting for an entire year and a half i would say when you're ready to share that with the press i would like to call the press on your behalf and it would just like crickets chirping in the room dead space and i would just be like i don't understand like why wouldn't you accept that uh coverage in the paper i mean they in the paper even said let me know when you when i can actually talk about this still to this day not the only place that they've shared it was internally with the members hannah i'm just curious did you know that the co-op because hannah lives here in my community hannah did you know that the co-op had solar paneling i'm just curious no right would that have impressed you as a person if you knew that yes point made now we also can't shove our gifts down each other's throats without permission. And clearly the co-op wasn't ready for that contribution. And I learned my lesson and now I'm giving it to people like you who are showing up and wanting that contribution. So that's another lesson in life, right? Speaking of, Rosalind was my share partner. And let me, I totally forgot to share in this whole series this year about holidays. So Rosalind is going to share with you, Rosalind, why don't you practice your pitch, but I want you to have that focus on your, people have heard your pitch before here, but let's give it, let's give your holiday its due, huh? Tell us about it. Thank you. I'm Rosalind Sedeck, I'm founder of the Child Centered Divorce Network, and we focus on helping parents protect their children before, during, and long after their divorce. And the biggest month for divorce filings is January. So every January is International Child Centered Divorce Month. And we put together a special website that provides free digital gifts to families so that they can get information that they need to do a better job in preparing for the divorce and, and telling the kids about divorce, co-parenting after the divorce and meeting all the other challenges that they face. So the thing about, that was wonderful, Rosalind. The, uh, so Chase calendar of events, and this was before the internet even started, Chase would publish an annual book and it would be full of holidays and so forth. Now it's online and so forth. But press really used this Chase's sort resources for uh, tie-ins, seasonal tie-ins. So when we talk about creating news and story ideas, which is one of the things that we promised we would talk about in call one, is you've got to do breaking news, you've got to do seasonal news, one or the other. So what the, and you got to think about who you're actually pitching. So um, national press, right, they're like, if we're talking about like a national TV show, like Good Morning America, they're dealing with the breaking news of the day that's happened in the last 24 to 48 hours. And that's, they're filling their future guests based on that breaking news. Or they've got celebrity news and so forth. But guess what they're thinking about already? They're already thinking about January, right? It's not gonna be their breaking news segments of the day, it's gonna be their soft news. But we're already in October and they've already started to fill their guests for November. And then when November hits, by the time we've got like December 6th-ish, they've got all of December filled out and half of January so that they can go on break. That's how TV works. Now magazines, so um, I was just actually reading an O magazine. So uh, national glossy editors are already, they've already either written January or they're already on to spring. So it all, that's why you have to think about short lead or long lead, right? Broadcast, typically short lead, they're dealing with the news right now. But long lead, these glossy magazines that everybody wants to be in, they're actually dealing with what's happening already in 2021. So Rosalind, you know, so let's say that like, okay, she really wanted to get an O Magazine and O Magazine's like, oh, we already finished our January issue content. And you can look at their advertising schedules, their calendars on when they sell advertising. And then you can kind of see how far in advance they're working. And so um, the other thing is, is that typically national magazines are doing six months in advance, but those local magazines, who's our Philadelphia person? Oh yeah, 
the memoirist, right? Clements. Okay, so Clements, one thing that you could do is um, you're in Philadelphia, there's magazines that have, that are local, they're about a month out. So a month out, like those, so you know those free magazines that you get at the coffee shops? So it is October 9th. Right now, by the, within the next week, they're putting all their November issues to bed. And they're going to be thinking about December. And so if you wanted to give them a bylined article, which is your content on, under your byline, your words, maybe 800 words, they might accept it for free. So Rosalind could do that, any market actually, because she's the national creator of that a holiday. And you just create it with Chase Calendar Events. That's all she did many years ago. You just create a holiday or you tap into somebody else's holiday. We represent Take Our Daughters and Sons to Work Day, uh, originally created by the Ms. Foundation for Women's Empowerment, you know, Girl Empowerment. Michelle? And uh, it's amazing now. Millions celebrate yeah. that now. So uh, there's a question. Yeah, um, uh, with the the local journalism, there's also the um, monthly newspapers, at least in my area, and so they're always um, their deadline is two weeks before the month starts. So, um, you know, when people are contacting me, October say October sixteenth, it's already too late for me. We're already looking into December. So the November issue is already done. And so for anybody looking for those kind of weekly, you really need to know when your local newspaper deadlines are as well. They're actually a great source. They, they're looking for local hooks, but there's a, there's a lead time as well for them. Yeah, and if we look at, um, so we've got this, so you got, we're thinking about holidays, we're thinking about, um, so the other thing I want everybody to notice about uh, creating a bio, that this is a time of the month that we also talk about first impressions and bios. Rosalind shifted her pitch based on the seasonal news and her bio, she introduced herself with this holiday in mind, which is distinct from the past time she's introduced herself. So Rosalind, did, uh, tell us how that experience was for you. Just, just now? Yeah. Yes, uh, well, it, it felt very meaningful because I had something of value to share as opposed to just making a pitch and that, that gives more strength. Good. And that's all, that is like, if you just take that away from these series and there's nothing else that you get, that is the heart of PR. Mm -hmm. You're actually being of service to the public. It's not about self-interest. And you're, and I wanted to play with you. That was the difference. I was like, oh, what? And I started to like, in my head, all of a sudden, like, which client can I tap into this holiday that she's created? Right? If you just introduced yourself as the one who created that holiday, I think most press, especially producers or anybody who's writing, who has the beat of family or relationships, that would be interesting to them. And so that's, I look how long we've known each other now, because you've been coming to the calls a lot. I didn't even know that. That's right. Yeah. So how do we want to play with you? Linda has something to share. Linda. Yeah, I like uh, Rosalind's um, website. I write a blog, um, Hope and Healing for Divorced Christians. And um, that would be a great topic for me to address. Yes, now Linda, she put it in the chat room. If you go to the bottom of your screen and you click on, there's like a little, looks like a quote, like, and it says chat. If you click on that, it'll, it'll, uh, it should bring it up. Got it. There you go. Got now, it. Uh, yeah, so uh, people are wanting more information about that holiday, Rosalind. Mm -hmm. You'll see that Sean wants more. Oh, so don't forget, yeah. everybody, the right, the bottom right-hand corner of your chat box, there's three little dots. If you click on that, left-click on it, it'll say save chat, and then you click on save chat, and then it actually saves on your computer. Cool. And if you, if you later realize that you've forgotten to save the chat, then you can actually email Hannah, 
Hannah's going to put her email address in the chat box right now for anybody who needs support on PR that uh, you need a chat, you need registration links, you need, I don't know where to go for lists or press kits or whatever you need, Hannah will help you, okay? So another, su another suggestion when I was hearing Linda saying that she really wanted, was interested in Rosalind's topic would be to invite guest blogging. And, um, you know, that that would be a perfect thing for Linda to invite Rosalind to guest blog on her blog about the, um, the event, the, the month, and wh where it came from and why her, what her why is about. Uh, that's, uh, it's wonderful to have guest bloggers. They, then you don't have to write so much. <laughs> Not writing so much, is a, is, but what else is there? What else is the reason to guest blog? Who knows? Uh, good for SEO, and it makes you look like you, um, you know, have relationships beyond your own circle of influence. Yeah, but exactly. Um, you can you can approach any blogger to do a guest blog, and you can approach any press venue for that as well. Again, you're going to start with that great first impression, right? A strong bio that focuses on what's in it for them. We had a um, Nita who had the, her, the Wildflower book. She just won an award. She and her husband won an award for the Wildflower book. Um, I'm going to give you her. She did actually get a press kit with us. I'm going to show that to you all. Um, and so there's the link to the Wildflower uh, press kit. And she sent me um, a pitch. Um, you know, there's, of course, you can purchase more services with us, right? And she purchased some more services with us. And one of the things that I noticed overall is that still the original pitch that she wrote was really focused on herself and her own services. She was trying to reach out to a CNN reporter who had featured another environmental uh, photo album. And she was like hoping that they would take note of hers. And, uh, we want to always lead with your expertise as a source and what it what it gives that person what it what's in it for that person it that's not a normal relationship every day right i'm not going to see hannah at the park running and go hey hannah what i have for you is xyz right she's gonna be like whatever <laughs> like i'm a publicist and i can put you on the wall street journal she'll be like who cares right but a press person, that's how they speak. That's just how they are always looking for a good story. Always looking for a good story. That's what, that's what their purpose in life is, right? So that's when we're speaking to them. That's why we lead with that. I've got a good story for you. Oh yeah? Prove it. I don't, I can't tell you how many times I've said that in my life, right? I'm the one saying I got a good story and the, the, the media person is the one saying prove it, right? But it could also just be another blogger. It could be an author. Uh, you know, humans just love sharing stories. Okay, so the other thing that I talked, so we talked about the holiday. I also promised, uh, uh, is she still with us? There she is, Clements. Uh, how to make money. I want to tell you what I just, I just spent $500 uh, with somebody who has your expertise. Yeah, okay, I'm going to tell you what she did. So first of all, um, you all know about the asphalt plant. Well, maybe some of you don't, but I've been fighting an asphalt plant 1,100 feet from my farm. We won. He withdrew his application. Stay tuned. So I have six months before um, he can reapply, and we have we believe that he's probably going to reapply, which means that I have I was like uh, I also had a friend who recently died. I mean, we all are dealing with a lot of um, grief and loss this year, and I've really been present to. What have I not accomplished in my life that I want to do? And guess what it is, Clements? My memoir. <gasps> Good for you! Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and not to, like, bring the whole party down, but some of you know, um, because we've had a few people in the group before, but I, uh, I was, I put my perpetrator, I was sexually assaulted as an eight-year-old, and I put him in jail when I was 20. And I literally have not shared that story except for, like, that, just passing. Since, and I'm 51 
And you know what? There's a lot of uh, little boys and girls who grow up to be adults who would love to hear how I did that and how I live a beautiful, look at Rita's life. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right? And I haven't done anything. And so when my friend died the week before last, she's another bee person. We, we keep bees together and she's been my bee mentor. I was horrified. She died in a car accident. And I just, the first thing I was there was like, oh my God, I still... I haven't written my memoir. And then I, I had a, uh, a, a, like a 51. So my high school friends now have children who are adults. I'm auntie Michelle. And I literally last year got a call from one of these children in my life that I've known since birth. I got chills. Right. And she was suicidal because she had been raped. And I just, and she, all she wanted to know was, does it get better in life? And I was like, I, I could give her my book if I had my book, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't mm -hmm. have it. And so I just, you know, I just was with her. It was like two o'clock in the morning or whatever. And I just stayed with her and talked with her and told her it would get better. You know, just answered her questions. Just was with her. Her mom doesn't even know that this happened. And she's, uh, you know, she swore me to secrecy, that kind of thing, you know, because I'm Auntie Michelle and I'm a safe person. I'm not mom and dad. And um, she's mm -hmm. thriving now. She's doing fine. You know, she's out of the woods. And I check in with her periodically uh, just because, you know. Um, but man, does that, that eat at me that I didn't, that I don't have that to give her. Mm -hmm. And so then the pandemic happened and everybody, all my friends are writing books like Ariel Ford, Deepak Chopra's former publicist. We started writing our stuff together and we were like doing like, oh, she's going to do her first novel. I'm like, oh, I'm going to. Mine's either going to be a memoir or not like that whole thing. She just posted on social media that her book's finished, her novel, her first novel, and she's getting an agent. I'm jealous. I was like, I'm so jelly. So I was, I was like, you know, I prayed about it and I'm like, there's going to be some kind of structure that comes up in my life where I can actually do my memoir. So she had an intro. So she put on Facebook, right? And I was just local. She just did local stuff. And a guy in the asphalt plant turned out to be his, her husband had been posting. So he and I became friendly. So I started seeing his post and it was just an introduction to writing a memoir, free course online like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I, I can do that. She had four classes, introductory classes. She laid it out. And so I signed up for that, paid $10 for that. And then in the course, she's, it's an upsell course to her eight week right? That gets them started. And then another eight, eight week to get them finished. And I like, I knew immediately I was doing it. And so I was like, you know, like everybody else is trying to catch up. I'm like, what are the dates and what are the times and you want my credit card right here? It is like, I was like, I couldn't wait to give her money. And then she tried, she's like, look, you know, I'm actually going to bring the price down next week. So I'm going to give you $98 back because you paid too much. And I said, keep the money and let me send you the six stories I already have. And then just tell me if it's mm -hmm. marketable. I want this thing published. I want it to be a movie. Let's get going. And she was like, great. <laughs> right? Can I and, ask her name? Uh, Sam Yule. Sam Yule. Samantha. Yes. Is this you know North Carolina? It, no. I look, yes, I've been yes, here yes. since yeah, she's, and I never she's knew. She's a her. former a APH uh, Association of Personal Historian colleague of mine. Yes, she's wonderful. She's amazing and she's actually a very good marketer and very savvy. You you fell into the right place. Well, you know what? And here's the thing that's crazy. I live about a mile and a half from Carl Sandburg National Historic Park, right? So what what sealed the deal for me is I checked out the bios of the people who work with her because I'm persnickety. Who's our persnickety writer in here? We have the persnickety lady, right? That's Rita. Rita. That Rita, would be right? me. Hi, Rita. Yep. Right? I'm Hi there. I'm persnickety about my writing. Thank you for being here. And I'm persnickety about, persnickety about proofreading and editing. Yeah. yeah. So here's Let's the Let's talk thing. some more later. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> So when I was looking at the bios and the first impressions, what was important to me is that I looked at her owned assets. We also talk about earned, paid, and owned, and I promised that I would do that in our blog, right? So I, she used 
paid media to get me, which is Facebook advertising. And she did a, a, a free event that then upsold me into her online retreats, right? It's like Thursday nights for two hours and, you know, eight weeks, so total of 16 weeks. Um, and then um, I looked at the, her, the bios of the people that she hires to work with her. So I, I looked at her website and her owned assets. These are the things that she owns. Was her website well written? Um, was it, let me, I'm, I'm almost like I should have actually asked her if I could talk about this. I didn't. I'm sure she'll be fine with she it. She will be fine. <laughs> okay, cheerful word. Yeah. I looked at all. I was like, yeah. you know, like what's the capacity for someone to work? Because I'm, uh, I like to get my money's worth. Let's just put it that way. My business partner, Drew Gerber, he was my seminar leader at Landmark uh, in Cincinnati. And when I do something, I'm intense about it. So I was the person in his seminar that always stood up and asked a thousand questions and drove him crazy. And he still talks about that, right? I'm like pretty intense about the things I do. And so um, I looked to see if they had the capacity mm -hmm. to be with me, <laughs> like, like, like more than one person, like, you know, but that's mm -hmm. not everybody. Some people like, but you could see it was a small organization. She's local and I loved her website mm -hmm. and I was like, Okay, right, but then her bios, like I looked to the end and then there's one guy in there that is, uh, one of the thing that got me was, uh, and I was like, perfect, right? Um, contact, of course, she's got her, I don't even remember now, but anyway, about us, under about us, it was, uh, so I was like, who's Sam? Awesome, like what she wrote about herself, Tony, and Tony's the people's poet, born in San Francisco, currently resides in Hendersonville, where I live. He is the current Carl Sandburg writer in residence and a San Francisco Art Commission individual artist guarantee. He was shortlisted uh, as a poet laureate for, I was, in a push cart prize nominee. Anyway, I was like, and then he said, everyone's life is a story worth telling. I'm the storyteller to the media. I felt like I had landed. <laughs> That's all you need is mm -hmm. to make the first impression for your tribe. Speak to your tribe. They spoke to me. I was looking for like, I need professionalism. I need capacity. I need, I need sparkle. You know, those are the kinds of things that got my attention and her little like memoir magic. She calls herself a cheerleader. I just was like, I was sold. So, and then, so she's but, great. you can't do, you can't do better than Sam. She's really wonderful. Thank you, Marjorie. Well, and then I kind of felt silly that I'd lived here for so long. And I was like, how come I hadn't crossed she, paths with her? She before? was in Germany till last year. She's just re relocated back to Hendersonville. So she's reestablished herself. Look at you. I can't even believe like six degrees of separation here. So <laughs> wild. So the point is though, that she used a Facebook event you know, not unlike what we're doing here. So if you can participate in this, you can do this in your own life for your own mm -hmm. tribe. Okay. Then she upsold people into an actual, uh, course. Uh, ours is pretty soft because we really just want you to have ours is a giveaway. So we just want you to have this workbook. And then if you need PR services, we're here if you need us. Right. And it's, we always feel like the giving away comes back to us tenfold. So, uh, you don't always have to like upsell into a higher program, but that is the model that most people use. Then you've got, so that's your paid and your owned. Then we've got earned. Before I go to earned, any questions about paid or owned? Ready, clear? Advertising or everything, that, all your intellectual property, everything that you own that is you. Earned, this is you in the news cycle. This is you in editorial coverage. So when you're looking at a magazine, you'll see like at the top, it'll say advertorial. That's not what we're talking about. That's paid. So mm -hmm. when a guest blogger says, hey, you can write in my blog, that's still editorial. But when an influencer says you have to pay me $500 to talk about your product, that's paid. The difference is, is that paid and owned, you have a 100% control over and you should ask for the messaging that you want because you're paying for it or you either own it. With earned, 
it is up to that press person and it is just not okay for you to strong arm them into your message. And that's really the distinction that we learn and what we help people with and why we keep the focus on like why Rosalind's bio, like her introduction about the holiday was more about the public good and the, um, the press person or the nonprofit or the uh, therapist or whoever is like participating with her. So questions about the difference between editorial media and paid or owned media. Let's, uh, let's when we break into a session and I want you to talk about your paid, earned and owned, like just one example from each so that we make it really crystal clear for ourselves. So let's break into a group. So let's talk about uh, paid, owned and earned. So uh, we did have, I know that sometimes we don't have a lot of time. And so some people might um, feel like they have to share a little more. We did have um, uh, Linda shared and then Marjorie uh, quickly shared. So I wanna use an example of, uh, as to kind of make it crystal clear for everybody what they were sharing. So Linda is an international astrologer and Linda, what we didn't get from you though, Linda's on the phone, uh, unmute Linda Hanna. Um, I, she talked about her examples of, she had paid to be in a book and it looks like earned editorial, but she actually paid. And the distinction is there, she had control over what went into that submission, right? Even though it looks like it might be uh, earned editorial for the people reading it, she has control over what's said. That's the distinction. Then she also had um, a bylined article that she submitted to the paper because she does have a degree in journalism. And she's like, if you have a good, uh, good content, then they, they might take it and not change it, but they could change it. But here's the thing that she distinguished as owned in addition to her website was her radio show. She has a radio show on Blog Talk Radio. Um, Linda, what is the name of your radio show? Um... Well, if you go in there and you just put my name, Linda Berry, you'll see them all, B-E-R-R-Y. And it's called the Spiritual Discovery Radio Show. And then I had another one that's under my name. So it's all connected to the same location, the Lunar News Radio Show. I would do, uh, or I do uh, a show on the full moon and the new moon. Perfect. The, yeah, the Spiritual Discovery Show, I would have guests on that. So I would bring guests in, in the fields that I operate in, which is spiritual, metaphysical, holistic, even uh, dabbed into the paranormal. Perfect. So you can see that we've got these varying methods. So this is marketing 101. And most of you, this is a review. But for some of you, this might be these distinctions might be new. So let's then move to Marjorie's example, which is so Marjorie has a new cable show. So similar to Linda, you both have shows. Um, and then she writes regularly as a journalist, Marjorie does, right? And then you have your Facebook as your own example, but we had a hard time really finding paid examples for you, right, Marjorie? Uh, I really haven't done much of any paid advertising at all. I, do you mind, because you've been to so many of these, I'd <laughs> like to give you homework if that's, uh, if that's acceptable to you. I will certainly try. Okay. I think you're going to be really pleased with Facebook advertising. Oh, I have done a little of it when I put out a new book and I just haven't done it for this newest book. So okay. that would be the, the nudge to do face, a Facebook ad for the newest book. So you didn't do any Facebook advertising in the pandemic for walks? No. You know, so you could, so here's, this is an example for everybody, right? Well, well then what do you advertise? What do you, when you have so much, I've got, several books, I've got a show, I've got this course, I've got that. What do I lead with? Again, you lead with what the public needs. Right, right. So you would lead with what, and I had just had deja vu, awesome. So I just had, like, I'm like, dreamt about telling this to Marjorie before, it's awesome. <laughs> okay, so you get that, people need to walk in the pandemic period. <laughs> it's a very baseline thing, okay? Right. Now, there's a woman that I, I don't, I think that one of the first calls I told you about my personal physical therapist, my back went out a few years ago, and I just happened to say to her, 
was I was leaving, I said, oh, you know, you should probably look in. I said, you know, your tips are so good. Every, bike, every mountain biker needs your tips. I said, you know, you could really create a big business with that. She goes, oh, you think so? And I said, I recommend that you look at click funnels. It's sort of like an infusion soft that you know, like, cause they were a client at the time. And I was like really into the click funnel community. They were just really awesome. It's basically monetizing yourself online. Okay. And uh, she's like, awesome. Thanks. Next thing you know, she actually took my unsolicited <laughs> advice. I her she just created a, a page, a group called mountain biking ladies. And within like a short period of time, there was like, you know, a thousand. Then there was 6,000. Now there's like 12,000. This is literally like within a year's time or a year or two. I think I threw my back out. Yeah. Two years ago. In the December of two years ago. So that's her feeder, like all of her courses. And then she just does courses like my uh, Sam Yule, right? So Sam does it through Facebook, uh, like these free events. But um, now uh, Elizabeth is her name, Liz Cook. And she just posts, hey, I've got a new series on core and climbing and how we're going to do like a six week course. We're going to meet Tuesday nights and I'm going to coach you via Zoom on these in this program that you can do. And then she's bought into ClickFunnels and has all the stuff that helps her get that all done. And then I was, I was like, I'd gotten like a ping, 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 be a part of this group. And I checked in with her and I was like, oh my God, you actually took my advice. She goes, I did. And I was like, oh my God, good for you. And she goes, I'm going to be a, do, a, a two comma club. Like inside the ClickFunnels community, they have something called two comma club winners where you make like six figures in a year's time and then you get a big award at their national conference. Okay, it's like this whole, like, it's a great community. Like there's all kinds of communities like that though. ClickFunnels isn't the only one, uh, but that's her goal now. So she's got, she's supported. She's, she was contacted by Facebook. They did like a whole video series just with her, just because she had such growth. Why couldn't mm -hmm. you do that Marjorie with a walking group? I, I am doing it with my free group. I, I'm getting people every single day who are coming to my walking group and on Facebook that find the it's uh, Easy Walks, Massachusetts, Rhode Island and nearby. I get about 10 people a day are, are coming there right now. I would, I would put a little like just 10 bucks towards some advertising just to see what happens. Because once those and then stop it, once those algorithms take off, or just some free giveaways. I'd love to see what happens because there's no reason why you shouldn't like, especially maybe it's just, if you want to, this is your questions, right? Geographically located, or do you want to go broad? She went broad, which is mm -hmm. why, you know, cause people are, everybody's got to answer those questions for yourself. If you're going right. to be like right on it or broad that way. Right. Right. Well, anyway, so that's, uh, We'll have to stay tuned to see what Marjorie comes back with on that one, right? But I'm very interested. So any final words on your earned, owned, or paid, or any questions that are left unanswered about that? No? Yeah, I, Michelle, this is Janet Parnes. I'm sorry, I came in a few minutes late. I couldn't find the link in my email. So how do the earned, owned, and paid, when do you use this? Is this what use you- Use them interchangeably what, together. Excuse me? you use them interchangeably together. Mm -hmm. So like when you get a placement in on a, with a TV show or a radio show, you take that link and then you put it through your, your owned assets, mm -hmm. social media, websites, you leverage it with your newsletters your or pitch. then you actually say, Oh, oh I see what you're advertising. saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you, I, yeah, I'm one of those people that does it, but I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it and earned pay, owned and paid. I hadn't thought of it in those terms. I see what you're saying. But when you, but people don't give distinctions to them. And so then they don't have a comprehensive marketing plan. But okay. when you're doing, why do PR? Sometimes people realize, oh my God, I don't need earned. I actually need an advertising program. Like okay. I want to launch a book and it may that you need something on your own assets. And it has nothing to do with talking to the press yet. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect answer. Okay, that's see, and that's these distinctions allow us to then talk about it. 
for next Here week, we we're going to be really getting into the, the art of pitching and who to actually talk to. And mm. so until next Friday, I love you. Go have fun. Thank you. Hashtag 21 day. Peter. Don't forget to save your chat. Michelle, Clement, Clement say something to say. Yeah. Um, I just, I really am so impressed by your drive to write this book. And I know, I mean, if you've got um, Sam helping it, I mean, I can't outdo that. But if there's something I can do to help you, the way that you help me and all of us, I really hope you'll reach out. I really am just so grateful that there are people out there like you, like not just holding these Zooms, but also like doing this other work and caring about community and others. Like, just please let me help you if you need it. Thank you. Oh, that's so lovely of you. Thank you so much. I, thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.